All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast. Once again, everybody, PayPal and Patreon links both down there. If you want to support me, only do so if you actually can. So it's been just about a month. So therefore, it is time for the new monthly U.S. drought situation update. And the situation has gotten not better, because of course not. There has been some mild precipitation in Northern California that's helped with keeping some of the reservoirs a bit steady as well as also over along the Colorado River, Lake Powell has been ticking up by a little bit. So starting things as we usually do with the big two players, Lake Mead and Lake Powell. And to explain, as always, for anyone new, Lake Mead and Lake Powell don't just provide water to Las Vegas and the middle of nowhere. They actually provide a decent chunk of particularly Southern California's water as they are storage reservoirs along the Colorado River whose purpose it is to release water whenever the river flow is not adequate in order to keep the river flow adequate, in order to be able to continue to supply the Colorado River Aqueduct, which is a pipeline system that pumps water from the Colorado River over into California. Nowadays, for the last two decades or so, once we hit this century, the time periods where the Colorado River's water flow has been not adequate enough have basically become perpetual. It's it's all the time. Even though like any other lakes and reservoirs, they have seasonal cycles throughout the year where they do regain some water based on what time periods snow melt and various precipitations happen. Overall, it has in total been a continuing net loss as they are not able to replenish what they have to release to keep the river flow adequate. And so this year, or this water cycle year, Lake Mead is at the height of its replenishment season got back up to a water level of 1,067 elevation feet. As the U.S. lake system is measured in elevation feet, or how high the water is above sea level, Lake Mead got back up to a level of 1067, and has since fallen over the last couple months all the way down to 1,051 elevation feet. So already dropping over 16 feet of water level in just the first half of its normal depletion cycle of the year. However, the water level is often deceptive. You'll see on its information that its deepest point is 700 feet deep, and that is true, it is 700 feet deep, if it were full at least, right behind the dam, or whatever its given maximum depth is. Because the only part that's between, say, 500 and 700 feet deep is the main channel that, if the reservoir were not in place, would be the channel that the Colorado River actually cut through the landscape, which is only a couple hundred or a couple thousand feet across. As you can see in satellite photos, major reservoirs are not just said main channel. They span huge areas, they have huge arms and fans that reach out from them where the bulk of the water actually is stored volumetrically, and those broader areas are only usually like say 200 feet deep compared to the 500 to 700 feet that the main channel or main canyon that the river that feeds the reservoir cuts. So what's the actual water storage situation for Lake Mead? Not good. As it started out at the height of this water cycle year, 34% full. And now, after two months, it has dropped down to only 30% full. So if it keeps dropping at this rate for the remaining two months of its normal depletion phase, then this year it's going to drop all the way down to potentially only 26, maybe even only 25% full. Lake Powell, further up from Lake Mead, is already at only 24% full, and it stopped its decline previously at 3,522 elevation feet. And over the last month or so, it's gotten back up to about 3,524. However, that's come at the expense of Lake Mead, and that is most likely for the sake of preserving Lake Powell's power generation capability. So Lake Powell was already down to, you know, 3,522, and the intake level for its generators is not that much farther down. It's only at or just under about 3,500 feet. So it was barely 20 feet above it. And so most likely I would suspect they're releasing the extra water from Lake Mead now in order to try to stall off Lake Powell because if Lake Powell drops too much farther, then the generators at the dam are going to have to shut down. Whereas Lake Mead still has a little bit to go, its water intake system for the generators at Lake Mead at the Hoover Dam is, I believe, 
between 990 and 1,000 feet, or that's the, the elevation level that it's at. So Lake Mead can still shave off another 50 feet before it hits its limits. And then down to the south in Arizona, primarily looking at Phoenix, as that's where the bulk of Arizona's population lives. The Phoenix area gets its water from a number of surrounding reservoirs that have a collective measurement system. They measure in collective total percent full, and usually, or historically, they they drop by 5 to 10 percent, sometimes more, and rebound with the Arizona monsoon season. However, that's no longer the case every year, and they've been, as I said before, gradually over time, losing more than they recover. And for the past few years, they've been in the 70s. However, it looks like it's starting to go down again. Last year, they got as low as 65 or 66 percent and rebounded up to around 75 or 76. Now this year so far, before we've even hit the summer, they are down to 70. So potentially going down to the lower 60s, maybe down to 60 itself. We'll have to see, which is not going to turn out great, of course, because a lot of water intense businesses and industries have been built in Arizona in the middle of a desert. As well as Arizona being one of the primary U.S. cotton growing states. Cotton being an enormously water intensive crop. However, a lot of it is being grown in Arizona in the middle of a desert. Utah is also not doing all that great. And the governor of Utah has actually declared a drought emergency, water emergency recently. Utah, as you can see on the chart, is way down in its collective reservoir percentage. It is on the final end of this water cycle year's normal upswing phase. Last month it got up to about 43% total full, and so far in the first half of May, the Utah Reservoir Network has regained another 2% and is up to 45% full. And obviously we're about to hit the summer months where the decline starts. And if this year's decline is anything like last year's, then you can see the kind of trouble that's coming. Over in California, because of the huge concentration of things more in Southern California versus the bulk of the precipitation usually received by the state, and thus the bulk of the reservoirs being located in Northern California, water is not supplied by area. Water Water in California is distributed through an aqueduct system from a series of a handful of large reservoirs, primarily in the north. The biggest of the reservoirs, Lake Shasta, last year dropped from 980 all the way down to 880 in its elevation feet level, which took it from about 50% full around that area down to only 22%. It has since rebounded up to about 40% and has basically leveled off now, although it is holding steady during the time frame when it normally would have started declining and currently is at 947 elevation feet or so, but that obviously still being a net loss year over year. Lake Orville was the only one who actually regained water level over this past water cycle year having lost about 100 feet also last year, but then regaining about 140 feet of water level this year. Also last year, having gone down close to 20%, however this year being back up to about 54%, and about at the point now where it normally goes through its depletion cycle, and it has leveled off so far, it has not started dropping yet, so hopefully maybe it will be able to hold on for a little bit. The next biggest one on the list, Lake Trinity, has already begun heading down though, and Lake Trinity, it had dropped from around 2,280 down to around 2,210 elevation feet. It did regain water level up to about 2,232, but that was it. And now it's been heading down and is down to 2,224, which is a loss of about 2% of its volume capacity from 32.7 down to 30.6%. And New Malone's had dropped from towards 1,000 down under 930. It stayed all right and got back up and held there for a little bit. However, now it's on its way down and has slipped over the last month from 932 down to 928, which is thankfully only a 1% drop from 38.6 down to 37.5%. And finally, we'll look down specifically in the San Joaquin Valley, where a bit of the water is drawn directly from the San Joaquin River itself. And so how's the river itself looking? It is looking not good at all. It's looking, it is looking rather, rather terrible, actually. Down at, you know, about 15% or so of its normal water flow volume. 
So, yeah, obviously not a good situation. I will pray for everyone in the Southwest that it does not remain so. But anyways, that's it for this one. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. Links are down there if you want to support me. Like I said, only do so if you actually can. You can also go subscribe to my Catch channel too for, you know, not bleak, depressing content. We're trying to get her up to 1,000 subs before November so she can get monetized as well. But no matter what happens to me, may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.